well done. We've written a book and it's published and people can go out and buy Mindfulness and Pen and Ink. And speaking of Mindfulness and Pen and Ink, you came up with that title. How, how did you come up with it? Or what, what made you think of that? Well, we've talked back and forth about meditation and mindfulness. And uh, we conduct, or we were in a workshop for uh, mindfulness. And uh, it's something that I've tried to practice uh, as often as I can, being in the moment. And the thing about Zen Tango is that uh, being in the moment is such a uh, relax, relaxing thing, it's a joyful thing. Uh, mindfulness is being in the moment. And I think that's kind of where the title came from, Mindfulness in Pen and Ink. Uh, that kind of says it all. It kind of stuck. Once you came up with that name, it kind of stuck with us. Well, it's something that we, we've always wanted to incorporate more than what we first began doing. When we were teaching, I mean, yeah. Originally, yeah. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Well, I think it's a good name, Mindfulness and Pen and Ink. It's a very good name. Don, we made a, a conscious decision to make this a, an e-book rather than a print book. Why did we do that, do you think? Well, I think it came about because it um, has been our philosophy, and I think Rick and Maria's, that they wanted to share this with the world. And this is our small way, I think, of getting it to a larger number of people than we might have had we gone with a print book. Right. Um, this could conceivably be picked up and used, uh, you know, mindful and pen and ink throughout the world. I, mean, I, I was talking to someone the other day and they said, you know, I, I had mentioned something about India. And they said, well, you know that parts of India were part of the crown colonies and that there are many English speakers that's over there, so you probably aren't going to have to have, you know, they can buy it without having to. Right, and we do have CZTs in India now. This is true. Another thing, Don, is that a person could take their Nook or their Sony reader or their Kindle or their iPad, take with them at any other time. Well, I think that's what Rick and Maria were talking about. It's portable, three and a half by three and a half. Uh, what woman can't put a, a tile in her purse with a micron pen? And what man can't put it in his suit jacket or his shirt pocket, carry it wherever he goes. And then if they have their Kindle along with, they can bring it out and, and use all that creativity. And how can a potential tangler use this book to bring out his or her own creativity? Well, I think we tried quite hard in Chapter 5 to include ideas and activities that you can do in addition to the tangles that you are learning. And uh, I think anyone who begins and follows this process will find it a benefit in that it leads towards uh, joy, it is relaxing, uh, it is developing a skill, and in its very simplicity is what makes it such a powerful thing to do. So, in a sense, you're saying that someone who has been tangling for years could benefit from the book, and the beginning tangler could benefit from it, too. I think that's true. What, what I have found is that the people who have gone through the process and who follow the process that we, have, we talk about so often in the book, um, they stick with it. It is the people who don't follow the process, right. who drop it and don't continue to. So Don, we have finished our book and it's been exciting. I enjoyed working with you on writing it. It's been really good. It's been a lot of fun. Mindful and pen and ink. It started quite a few months ago and it has really grown and now it's being published 
Uh, you can find it on Apple or at Apple iBooks at the Apple iBook Store, Barnes and Noble, Smashwords, and soon to be on Amazon. Um, we hope you'll take a look at it. We hope you'll buy the book. I think you'll find it not only interesting, but rewarding, a joyful experience, and something that you would like to continue the rest of your life, as we would like you to do.